made to bolster the lineup. Guys like this, Fred McGriff, the screaming Mimi to right against the Reds tonight will pick up the slack left by Justice. Marquise Grissom will do his part as well. Bottom two, one nothing Braves make it four nothing. Three men on, three men in, a triple for Grissom. Four nothing Braves after two. Greg Maddox on the mound. Trying to get back some of that old form. Thomas Howard, Brett Boone, and Jeff Branson. Goodbye, chain. goodbye, goodbye. Seven strikeouts for Maddox. Bottom five now, 6-2 Braves. Jermaine Dye, first major league at bat, first major league hit. And oh, look at it, Nancy. It's a big one. A home run for Dye. What a moment for this kid, huh? The Braves take it tonight over the Reds. Final score, 8-2. to two. The win, the first for Maddox in three weeks. Gave up ten hits to get it. McGriff, Klesko, and... Your man, Jermaine Dye, with homers for the Braves, who have now won 10 of their last 12 games. First, Phillies at the Dodgers. The Phillies pitcher hadn't given up a hit until the bottom of the fourth. Mike Piazza goes the other way. It's a two-run home run just inside the foul pole. That tied up the game at two. Two batters later, Dodgers take the lead right here. Raul Mondesi launching the solo shot. This to left center. 3-2 L.A. The Phillies would come back to tie it at three, but then in the bottom of the fifth, Roger Cedeno chopping the single to right. Mike Blowers and Chad Fonville score the deciding blow. That made it 5-3. 6-3 was the final and shake the hand of Hideo Nomo as he celebrates his first career win versus the Phillies. Zip Tribe in the third, Earl Hershiser working to Kevin Elster, and Elster takes this pitch deep to left. Woo! It's foul. Oh, no, just fair. The solo shot, 2-1 Cleveland. Rangers would then go on a tear, scoring six runs in the fourth. Kevin Elster again, the knockout blow to Hershiser, the RBI double, the third RBI double of the inning, and sixth hit. 6-2 Six Texas, 9-5 Texas, top of seven. Elster at the plate. Oh, no. Oh, yes, again. The solo shot deep to center. Forget about it, Kenny. Elster four for four with four RBI, including two homers and two doubles. 10-5 Texas, but hold on. The Tribe getting it going. Score 10-7, bases loaded for pinch hitter Manny Ramirez. Drop the bat. No need to hurry. Grand slam strut. 12-10 Cleveland final. The Indians have now won 13 straight at the Jake. Eddie Murray with two RBIs on the night, passing Ted Williams for 10th place on the all-time RBI list. Next stop, Oriole Park, Camden Yards, M's and O's. Bottom 7-7-6 seven, seven, Baltimore, Rafael Palmero. Was four for four, make it five for five with some wizardry. Two run shot, nine six O's. Next batter, Bobby Bonilla. The shot to center. Ken Griffey Jr. has got it covered. Nice diving grab. Top of eight, nine seven O's. Bases juice for Alex Rodriguez. Fastball, boom. Deep to center, gone goodbye. Grand slam, 11 9 M's. Bottom nine M's holding on to a 13 10 lead, and this is why I say holding on. Kiss it goodbye. Chris Hoyles unloads them. The ultimate answer, Grand Slam ball game. 14-13 in a slugfest goes the O's way. The Orioles rally falls short in one category. They come up one minute shy of the longest nine-inning game ever at four hours, 20 minutes. The longest game was a four-hour, 21-minute marathon between the Orioles and Yankees earlier this year. Those Yankees hosting the Angels, Katsuhiro Maeda, the Yankees' Japanese sensation coming out before the game. Bottom four tied at one. Look at J.T. Snow. A ah, little bit of nectar with the glove, robbing Paul O'Neill right there in the bottom of the fourth. But O'Neill would get his revenge, and here it is, a screaming Mimi over the wall and right. That's in the fifth, two aboard, three-run shot. Yanks up 6-2 there, and they go on to win it. 8-5 is your final. O'Neill homer number five. Jim Abbott, he always seems to be right on the verge of a good outing, then allows a big inning. The fifth was it tonight. New York scored five, and the lefty now falls to 1-6. and six. In Boston, the Red Sox hosting the A's tonight. First inning, A's up 2 nothing. Mo Vaughn, he's been so hot. Drives one deep to right field. Jose Herrera has a beat on it, but look at this. Off his glove and over the wall. Homer number 15 for Vaughn, 2 1 A's. Tied at three, bottom 11. Game over. Will Cordero, oil change time. Let's go to Sitgo. Two run shot sends everybody home. The Red Sox win it in 11. 5 3 your final. Giambi and McGuire homered for the A's in the first. Then Oakland got virtually nothing the rest of the game. They won eight straight hitless innings. In fact, at one point, Todd Van Poppel falls to 0 4 with the loss. In Minnesota, the Brewers visiting the Twins tonight. Top of the sixth, tied at one. 
Dave Nelson unties it. This baby is solo shot over the wall and right over the little baggie out there. 2-1 Brewers still in the sixth. Nelson again, deep again. Believe it or not, same inning, same deal. A home run, a three-run shot this time. Brewers let it 2-0 uh, on his first home run, 10-1 on his second home run. Forehand done, she throwing out the ball at the Astros. Bottom eight, 2-1 Pirates. Terry Collins, Astros manager, goes to pinch hitter Orlando Miller. Jim Leland counters, pulls Zane Smith, puts in John Lieber. Then Collins sends Derek May to pinch hit for the pinch hitter. Oh, look at Derek May. Makes a genius out of Terry Collins. Yanks one down the right field line. G-O-N-E. Forget it. Gone out of there. Two-run shot. Three. Montreal at the Murph, and I'm going to stop alliterating now. And Uget Urbina in the first. Saws off Tony Gwynn. That doesn't happen, because Urbina throws hard. Top of the second, no score. Dave Silvestri, base hit to center off. Fernando Sherman Obando scores, and it's 1-0 Montreal. Still in the second, base is loaded, two outs. Fernando against Mike Lansing. Swing, ends the threat. 2-1 Padres, top of the fifth. Mike Lansing on second. Alou at the plate, hot shot to third, and Scott Livingstone, ole! Through the wickets, Lansing scores, we're tied at two, and Ken Caminiti normally playing third says, I could probably have done better than that. Next batter, Sherman Obando, drives one to left center. Ricky Henderson and Steve Finley, they're gonna converge, and oh, somebody take charge. Alou scores from first, Urbando gets a double, and it's 3-2 Expos, bottom of the fifth, and there's Uget Urbina, finding the groove. Gets Henderson with the changeup. Bottom of the sixth, Livingstone at third, two outs, Brian Johnson at the plate, and Urbina, you, 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 you. Solid through six. Still 3-2, bottom of the ninth, Chris Quinn leading off. The shot to shortstop, Mark Grozelanek with the great diving stop, throws to Quinn, and the Expos hold on. You get Urbina, gets the double. Pedro Astacio, top of the first. Astacio oh, with the great snag right. to Eric Caros for the out. Next batter is Mickey Morandini, the long well, fly to right to field. Right Raul Mondesi field. goes back and makes the catch. Ah, Pilgrim on the mound. <laughs> For the Phillies, it's Sid Fernandez. Bottom of the second. <laughs> Gets Karras looking. Next batter, Raul Mondesi. Swing. Then Mike Blowers at bat. Swing it. Sid with 11 Ks in the game, but as usual in the fourth, Sid begins to tire. Mike Piazza with the little hanger. Roger Cedeno goes to third. Off the base hit. The next batter is Eric Karras. And Karras got it. A three-run homer. Dodgers up 3-1 now. Karras is sixth of the year. To the bottom of the sixth, men on second and third. Delano DeShields facing Sid. And Sid, throw it already, Sid. Yeah. The base hit up the middle. Karras and Mondesi score. Dodgers up 5-1. And they would go on to win it by the final of 72 headbutts all around. That's very touching scene in the dugout. Pedro Stasio now three and three for bottom of the sixth. Mike Morgan taking awfully deep by Larry Walker. The first ball ever to visit the third deck in Coors Field, 475 feet, five two cards. But John Mabry, oh, he was not to be outdone. The base hit off Marvin Freeman in the top of the fourth. The double down the line off Freeman, his seventh double of the year. Top of the fifth. Mabry now up the plate again. It's the John Mabry show. Triples over Walker's head in center field, scoring Gary Gaetti. And all he needs is a homer now for the cycle. And at the top of the seventh, Mabry got it. Oh, boy, this one spanked. A homer, two-run shot. It's the cycle. Second of the year, not the cycle, but the home run. Cards up seven to three. Bottom of the ninth, however. Two and two on cards up two now. With two men on base, John Vanderwall goes over the wall. Eckersley gave up five runs in the ninth as the Rockies win. Nine to eight. Five O's up two nothing. Alex Rodriguez facing Alex Kent Merker with a man on and swung on and belted. Number eight for Rodriguez. Tied at two. Same score in the sixth. John Marzano back from the minors facing Merker with two on and Marzano drills one down the line. Jay Buner and Luis Soho come in for two Mariners. Marzano's first two ribbies of the year. It's now four three Mariners in the seventh. Two on for Jay Buner. Anyone? Buner. Buner. Number 13 off Roger McDowell. 7-3 Mariners. 
Then Alex Rodriguez shows he's more than just a bat. The stab on Ripken, the fields fires and gets him. Quite a night for the precocious shortstop. The 20-year-old homered for the fifth time in six games. Bob Malacki, who pitched for the O's from 1988 to 1992, went five and a third for the win before the game, which actually lasted just three hours. The O's put B.J. Surhoff on the DL with a sprained left ankle. The good guys in the White Sox and the Tigers. And Top the of the first, John Farrell. His first Major League start since May 30th, 1994, and Frank Thomas welcomes him back to the game rudely. 13th of the year, 1-0 Sox. Farrell only one and a third. But yeah. starter of the White Sox, James Baldwin, he didn't get out of the second. Top of the fourth, 5-4 Sox. Boy, Greg Thomas, Cagle one gives one up field. to Darren Lewis. His first of the year for D. Lou, 7-4 Sox. Bases loaded in the top of the fourth. Yeah. Still, Ray Durham put that on the board. Grand slam, it's now 12-4, and Harold Baines, he's just sitting on dead red. Oh, you put that on the board. His ninth of the year, 15-4 Sox. Baines, eight RBI in just two games, and to quote John Van Beesbrook, that was a nice, muzzy win. <laughs> yes, you know, they got this guy because he's got a great glove and a great arm. There's the glove, and there's the, well, anyway, uh, four batters later, he got a chance to redeem men on second and third. Another routine ground ball. There's the glove, and all righty then. Mets offense trying to give him a lift. Top of four, two men on, clear. That's Todd Hundley unloading off of Jose Bautista. Three-run shot, 10 to three Mets. That's a nice cushion. 11 to four, two men on. Hundley once again up and over the gap. Second three-run shot of the game. He had seven RBI. Mets win it 14 to five. Nice day for Hundley. Two three-run home runs, one from each side of the plate. Hitting coach Tom McCraw called a batter's meeting on Thursday. Apparently it worked as they pounded out 15 hits. Cubs and Marlins at Wrigley. Where's the strike zone these days, we ask? Oh, I don't know. Where do you want it to be? How about there? Okay, fine. Next batter, how about there? Whatever you say, two strikeouts, good day to be John Burkett. Bottom of four, no score. That's Greg Colbrin, the diving play, and he runs over and gets his man, preserving no-hit ball for Burkett through five. Top of six, still scoreless. Gary Sheffield off of Steve Traxel. Baseball's little anomaly, and somebody please put a coat on that hanger across the street. Sheffield's 13th. One nothing Marlins, top of eight, still one nothing. Mike Perez, Charles Johnson, and that is a two run Johnson from Johnson left field, his eighth. Three nothing Marlins, they hang on to win it three to two. Burkett holding the Cubs to that Saturday. One two is hit deep. Way back he leaves off the game with his second home run in his last 586 at bats. One nothing Rangers, bottom of the second, two nothing Rangers, and Albert Bell. He gets it back. Ties Barry Bonds for the Major League lead with his 17th home run. It's 2-1 Rangers, top of the seven. Texas now down 3-2. And Damon Buford smacks one into left. Dean Palmer and Mark McLemore score, and Rangers go up 4-3. Bottom of the seventh, two out. Jeff Russell shakes off two called pitches. We set the drama. Julio Franco at second, Carlos Baerga at first, Albert Bell at the plate, and he gets him swinging. Big situation there. Bottom of the eighth, Rangers turn the D on. Rusty Greer on his horse. You can't see it, but he's on it. Makes the catch, and he slams his shoulder into the wall. It's a slight shoulder separation. He's listed day-to-day -day like the rest of the human race. Rangers win 6-3. to three. The win snaps Cleveland's six-game win streak and 13-game home win streak all at once inning lead in the very unall state like hands of the bullpen Jason Giambi facing Eric Gunderson and that's a home run Giambi cuts the lead to four to three in the eighth and Roger Clemens I'm out of here top of the ninth two outs Mike Stanton trying to save it pinch hitter Terry Steinbach got it over the monster ties the game at four and Mike Stanton says Muzzy. <laughs> Top of the tenth. One out. Rich Gars is pitching runners on first and second. Mark McGuire with the base hit to center. Brent Gates scores, and Kevin Kennedy says, I'm going to cheers. It's six to five final. Six of nine of their last ten. Top of the first. Jim Edmonds tries to get out of the way of the Kenny Rogers pitch, and he grounds to short. Edmonds never got up from the ground, and that was a metaphor for the Angels on this day. Wow. The bottom of the sixth, one nothing Yanks. Garrett Anderson, Runners going. he's in left field. That's Paul O'Neill at the plate. I was just slightly ahead of myself there. But that's Garrett Anderson botching it up. Tim Raines and Matt Howard score 3 nothing Yanks. 
The Yanks, however, had a little good defense. Gerald Williams makes the catch off Tim Salmon, then in the eighth. J.T. Snow with men on first and second, nobody out. A very key moment in the play, in the game. Matt Howard ends the threat. Joe Torre gets one less phone call from the boss. Howard's four, first inning. This is the way you go about it. Gets Joe Vitiello with that fastball. That will take us to the sixth inning. Viola against Craig Paquette, who goes to his room. Viola got pulled after six, gave up just one run on five hits. Viola with plenty of runs. Support John Olerud rips that thing into right center field. Joe Carter comes around to score, and the Jays take a lead two to one margin. Top of five now. Same score. Runners on first and second. There's Carter. There's Apier. There's the ball. Deep. Right center field. Yes. Gone shopping at the gap. Picks up a mock turtleneck there. Otis Nixon. Carlos Delgado score. Carter's got a triple. Jays up four to one. They would win it six to two. Viola, two years and one day after having elbow surgery, the former Cy Young winner is a plain winner. Joe Carter snapping his one for 19 slump with three base hits. Brewers and Twins at the Hubie Dome. Top of one, three nothing Brewers. Dave Nilsson off of Pat Mahomes. And that is deep to left. Marty Cordova can run as far as he wants. He's not going to get that. Four nothing Brewers. Bottom of five. How about some leather? Dave Holland's deep. Look at Chucky Carr. Watch the concentration. Up once and again. That's not bad. Let's take a look. 9.7 from the Russian judge. Never touches the baggie. He's quite an athlete, that Chucky Carr. Top of eight. Remember that Dave Nilsson guy? There he is again, up and over the hefty bag. This time it's to right field. Solo shot. Brewers win at 7-3. Nilsson, two home runs on Friday. Second inning, Mark Portugal facing Dwight Smith. And Smith sends Eric Davis to a gorgeous diving catch. Fourth inning, Davis getting it done at the plate. Facing Tom Glavin, got it. Ninth homer of the year, to right. It's one nothing red solo homer same score Ryan Klesko facing Portugal and, Co and Klesko takes him terribly awfully deep into the Atlanta evening 14th of the year we're tied at one same score in the eighth Johnny Ruffin facing Chipper Jones and Jones sends one down the right field line Jones will go around second and to third for a triple slides in safe Chuck McElroy comes to face Klesko and Blue. With Jones at third, Klesko Baloops one into center field. 2-1 Braves, and the Braves win by that score. Sixth win for the Braves in their last at-bat this year. Tom Glavin allowed one run on eight hits and seven innings for the win. Atlanta's 10th in a row against Cincinnati. The Braves have won 11 of their last 13 overall. Cincy has lost four straight. Mark Wollers pitched a perfect ninth for his seventh save. The Pirates and Strohs in the Dome, and Darryl Kyle looking for his first win of the year at the Dome, and gets spells Jeff King with a backwards K. Bottom of the second, Danny Darwin facing Sean Berry, and Berry spells trouble with a capital T, which rhymes with D, and that stands for Dinger. one nothing Strohs. Stayed that way until the seventh when the Pirates' bats showed up. Orlando Merced fresh off the DL. Bloops one to left. Game of inches. Jeff Bell, Jay Bell scores. This game tied at one. Top of the eleventh, Jason Kendall facing Todd Jones, and Kendall hits a chopper back towards the middle with two outs. And Kendall beats the throw by Orlando Miller. Jeff Bagwell thinks that the, that's the third out. And that's not the third out either. Jay Bell scores all the way from second. The throw is late. Pirates go up 2-1, to one, and that's your final.